My friends, what's going on, everyone? It's Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. Uh, it's another beautiful day here uh, on the greatest marketing show on earth. Uh, new tagline that I've been I've I've come up with here. Uh, borrowed it from another organization. Uh, I believe it was the um, Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus that said they had the greatest show on earth. I'm not sure Legendary Marketer was around when they came up with that one, or else they might have second-guessed themselves, my friends. But it's okay, because we're talking about marketing and entrepreneurship here, not simply entertaining people, although we are quite an entertaining show. We're mostly focused on educating and uh, talking about uh, what it's really like to build a business online in 2024. Okay, uh, we've been doing this now for many years. Um, Legendary Marketer's been in business now for many years. And uh, we certainly have an incredible, incredible amount of success stories inside of our community. Um, people who are mostly brand new, just getting started with online marketing. As you probably know, we teach uh, four specific business models. Um, how to sell information online via the core four courses, coaching, events. And then if you are new, oftentimes you want to start with affiliate marketing. Um, and uh, the cool thing is, is that there's so many different niches that you can do affiliate marketing in, right? Uh, we actually, uh, in one of our trainings um, in, in our more advanced program, uh, host a training called Decade in a Day, where we try to essentially condense a decade's worth of our experience in a day for you um, and show you how to enter a random niche. Uh, this last Friday, it was, um, it was chicken coop uh, farming, uh, how you could take information and uh, knowledge from this completely random niche that it just so happens that there's a lot of people out there who are interested uh, in, 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 ch in having a chicken coop, right? In chicken farming, whether that be for, you know, commercial purposes or whether that be for, you know, their own personal purposes and, and how to build information products, um, you know, starting with free eBooks and guides that you're giving away as something of value in exchange for people's email address all the way up to full-blown courses and coaching programs and even events. Imagine if you had an event for people coming to um, maybe your own chicken coop uh, and you doing hands-on training or you traveling out to theirs, right, helping them set it up for a premium high-ticket price. So there's so many different niches that you can apply this information in. Um, so many of our affiliates start out in, in niches that they're passionate about. Those include things like health and wellness, um, making money online, starting an online business, things of that nature. And today's guest is no different. She was a, uh, along with her, with her husband, who I met uh, at an event, uh, had a uh, brick and mortar, and I believe still do ATV business. Um, I believe out in Oklahoma, she'll have to correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but that business was, you know, bringing home the bacon, but also sucking the life and energy out of them because that's a lot of times what a business does, right? It does suck the life and energy out of you. That's why we have so much support and, and community here. Um, and, and we, and we like the business models that we teach here because they allow somebody to do them from home, um, versus have to go into a store every morning. So anyways, I don't want to tell her story. With that being said, please help me welcome Brooke Burrow to the show. Brooke, good morning. Hello, hello, hello. Did I get all of that right? You know, I know you didn't prep me. I didn't prep you as usual, but um, I know your story because I, I've uh, I've gotten to know you. Are you in Oklahoma or are you in Nebraska? I forget. No, Oklahoma. You're right. Got it. Oklahoma. Yes. Got it. And um, so ATV business, um, let's start back at the beginning. Um, what led you here for those who don't know who you are? You've certainly had a significant amount of, of success and momentum in your business up until this point, but it wasn't always that way. And we want to give people a full perspective of what it took you to get here. So help us understand some of the timelines um, when you started. What, what drove you here in the first place? What were you looking for? 
And if you found some of the things that you were looking for in the skill sets that you've learned here uh, to launch your own business. Yeah, absolutely. Um, So my husband and I started our side-by-side ATV business back in 2020, and it's always been his dream. He's been in the off-road industry for like eight years. He's been in a mechanical field for like 16 years. Um, And so it was always his dream to go out on his own. In 2020, the opportunity presented itself. So we jumped on it opened our own business um, like two weeks before COVID hit in Oklahoma. So we opened everything up and then it was like the world's shutting down. You get no business. We kind of panicked. I mean, we were, we were kind of freaking out. Um, But thankfully COVID really helped our business because everybody was stuck inside. Throw them. (laughs) Throw them. I brought Throw extra them. hats out this. I brought extra hats out this morning. Even one of my favorites, the old captain's hat. See that? Oh, I like it. <laughs> okay. Anyways, gosh, I don't know that I remember that you had started that, and I don't know if anybody picked up on that. What did you call that? The in the off road niche. Yeah, it's technically it's off road because it's like side by sides and ATV. So like the little yeah. like car type units that you see, but they're yeah. off road vehicles. It's those is what we mainly work on, and then we work on four wheelers too. So I just wanted to just point out that every kind of niche and industry kind of has its own little term, right? Mm -hmm. So um, just kind of interesting. I had actually never heard that term before, but not to interrupt you with, of course, an epic hat throw, but also um, I didn't realize that you had launched that particular business right at the beginning of 2020. So continue. Yeah, it was March 4th was the day that we opened our business um, of 2020. Yeah. So it was, I mean, like right when COVID hit. Um, And so thankfully, it it really helped our business because everybody was stuck inside. And so anything that was outdoor related, Mm. boats, RVs, razors, like side by sides, ATVs, all that stuff blew up that year. Mm. And so it really helped catapult our business. We took off. We did great in 2020. We did great in 2021. Um, 2022, we had our third kid, my first. I have two stepdaughters with Blake. And so we had a baby in 2022. Um, and that kind of slowly started the trajectory of like us kind of noticing not only a decrease in production just because our lives just totally changed. We just had a baby. Um, but also we started noticing a little bit of inflation increase. And so we got through 22, 2023 hit, and it was like, We just spent all of our Christmas. We just did all of our Christmas on credit cards because we were tight. Um, Everything started really clouding. We, you know, just got behind on different things here and there. And we were stressed. We were like, we need our business to have that like 2020 COVID boom right now. And it just wasn't happening because inflation was continuing to increase as well as our overhead. Being a small business right now is not the easiest thing, especially with all the increase in taxes and payroll tax and workman's comp and all that stuff. Mm. And so we were noticing a huge increase in overhead and not seeing that same increase on the production side Mm. um so we went back and forth we tried a bunch of different things tried to bring in different types of business to our business just to see if that would increase but it wasn't really making a huge difference um and it quickly turned into my husband working 60 70 hours a week we have a shop here at home so he would work the full day at work and then he would bring bikes home from work and then go out to the shop after dinner and work at our home shop on those bikes till midnight. And he was doing that every day. I mean, that was our normal. That's what turned into our routine. Um, And then it started affecting our kids because our older girls weren't getting time with dad anymore. And our baby wasn't getting the time that he wanted to spend with her and so on and so forth. And so Mm. I hit a point where I was, I was kind of stuck. I was like, I either have to find another way for us to generate income, or I need to walk away from the business and go get a job so that we have another stream of income coming in, or I need to figure out how to, a way to make money. And so I was in that way, just, or in that mindset of just trying to figure something out. And I scrolled across it, a video on Instagram talking about this girl, just making crazy money with affiliate marketing. And I was very confused. I had no idea what it was. Um, I thought it was a scam, honestly. I mean, I just, just like anybody that comes across a making money online opportunity, at first, it's not normal. It's not what we're used to doing. It is normal, but it's not what we're used to our normal being. And so it was very, very hard for me to even open my mind to that possibility, to the fact that I could literally bring home our normal income plus some from my phone, from working from home, and then still run our business full time. That was really hard for me to accept. Mm. And so I procrastinated it. I did not want to make that jump, social media terrified me. I My social media experience up until this point was posting on Facebook of like, we took a vacation, you know, we look at our Christmas photos, look at my new baby. It was nothing like it is now. And yeah. so that was the most daunting part for me, honestly. It was not necessarily even the tech stuff. I'm, I'm not super tech savvy, but I, I knew that I could figure that stuff out. It was more 
can I figure out how to actually like put myself out there and grow on social media and like make a name for myself and make content and like make good videos. Mm. Um, so I originally saw a video talking about all of this back in December of last year. And so I naturally started seeing, or I guess it was 2022 that I saw the first video. And so I naturally started seeing stuff pop up more and more on my feed. I was obviously still very hesitant. Um, in January, I actually bought the training and then I ignored it. I mean, I bought it and like threw it in the very back of my email. I was like, I'm not touching it. <laughs> I'm just going to pay for it. I did it. I paid for it. That's all I was supposed to do. And so I procrastinated for a few more months. Come April, I was just so sick and tired of our situation. Like I was defeated. I was not seeing it getting any better. There was, it was like we were in a dark tunnel that there was no light at the end of it. And we were just going to keep like going round and round and round in this tunnel. And I didn't know when the end was going to come. I mean, we weren't seeing a decrease in inflation happening. And so it was like, is this going to be reality for the next 20 to 30 years? I've got to do something. Wow. And it was almost like I was praying for an answer praying for that, like, you know, that saving grace. And I was getting it handed to me over and over and over again. And the opportunity was presenting itself and I was too scared to jump. And so finally in April, I just said to heck with it, we're going to do this dang thing. And um, what do I have to lose? I, I spent $7 on a course. Let's just take the course and let's see what happens. And so I took the course and I set my systems up and I, I went in. I mean, I dove deep. I went head first. I had actually just had surgery on my face. I had a cyst right here and I had stitches on my face. And I told myself, if I can post this video, this very first video with stitches in my face, looking all swollen and just get it over with, then I won't have an issue doing it later. <laughs> so that's what I did. My first like four videos. Jeez Louise. Had to throw the captain's hat. Yes. Um, so that's my story. Know, that's how I got here. You, you just gave us a real education on what it was like to be a, a, a traditional business owner through COVID. And wow, thank you for that. You know, it's it's rare that we get that exper that that sort of firsthand experience. And quite frankly, there's not a lot of people out there in the world who can you know give that experience firsthand. Um, we've all got our own, you know, and you as a you know, Oklahoma, brick and mortar business owner in the off road niche, you know, um, uh, you had some ups, you had some downs, but overall, even after those ups, which was a blessing because right. it obviously got you through 2020, you know, mm -hmm. 2021, if you will, but eventually, uh, you weren't able to keep your head afloat. It was like the inflation and the odds of, um, you know, the, the, the just, you know, the world in, in the things that were going on inside of it were, 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 were drowning you. And yeah. so, so often, you know, we, we, we talk about what are the odds of success in something like this? And clearly, we all know, and we write it down on the bottom of every one of our pages on our website, the average person who buys any how-to information on the internet gets no results at all. And, right. and we mean both courses, how-to things, self-help things, comes to seminars, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and and it, it's, it's like how many businesses are also actually successful? How right. many, what does it actually, I'm talking about offline traditional businesses. I mean, I met you and your husband. You guys are, you know, hardworking, dedicated. Uh, you got all the qualities that it would seemingly take to be successful at an offline business. And yet you were still, you as, you know, the wife of the, of the partnership and the partner inside the partnership uh, business partnership had to go out and get another job or yeah. in, in this case you decided to start another business so it gives us a little bit of perspective that it's not just this it's not just starting an online business where mm -hmm. the odds are stacked against you and you have to overcome things it's everything and yeah. and I think we you know I don't want to get down on this rabbit trail because it's not really a part of the main part of your story but not that you've never had a job before but you know i think a lot of us go into a job and feel this kind of false sense of security um that uh it's it's but i think we all kind of know a that we could lose that job hi doggy and b <laughs> that 
I think the per, a person who has a job is is probably facing those same challenges with inflation, raising rising rents, all of those things as well. And and some of you can comment in the comments. Thank you all for being here and for the lovely comments as well. But I mean, it's not just business owners. It's also people that have jobs who are facing these challenges and looking for side income. People wouldn't be coming into Legendary, wouldn't be pursuing. I've been doing this for 13 years. Wouldn't be pursuing side income, extra income, starting a business if it wasn't hard out there. You know, if inflation didn't exist, if it if 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 so many people weren't living paycheck to paycheck. And so what a wild uh, and, and really useful education and look into kind of what it what you experienced as a brick and mortar business owner over the course of the last four years and through COVID. So let's yeah. talk a little bit more because you've had some great success. You've now got an amazing audience. We'll get to that here in a moment. But you mentioned some of the things you had to overcome. And that's part of the show and part of what we want to teach people here at Legendary is what what are some of the things you're going to run into? Give you a full, you know, 360 degree perspective about the good, bad, and the ugly. So what yeah. were some of the ugly that you had to overcome and you bumped up against when you first got started? You mentioned getting on front of camera in, in getting out there on video. Was that the hardest thing for you? And and, and, and where do you, what other limiting beliefs were popping up for you, Brooke, that, that w made it difficult for you to kind of follow through and, and, um, and actually stick with this? So I think definitely like at the very beginning, the biggest one was social media, just because it was such a daunting thing. I had been watching, obviously I've had social media for a long time. So I've watched all these other people and kind of the picture perfect type person on social media. And I didn't feel like I fit that mold. And so it was hard for me to just think like you are, people love you. Like people love your story, your relatability, like the normal I don't even know if this is a word, but the normalcy of my life, you know, the fact that I am a very normal, average, small town human being, that is what people relate to me on. You just and invented that... it. <laughs> but I think it normalcy. Is. Don't trust. The, I mean, I, I'm a ninth grade dropout. So who knows? I, I skipped that part of English class, but um, yeah, continue. <laughs> I got your back. And so it was, um, that was a big thing for me to accept. And that took time, honestly, for me to, it took my account kind of growing and seeing like, oh, people do actually like me. Like people do actually like my story. But now looking back, that was such a huge thing that I should have capitalized on sooner than I did was who I really am. It's not about going and being all these other people or being exactly like somebody else who's made a lot of money in the space. It's about being 100% transparently you, because what's going to make them, you know, necessarily not purchase from you because I'm not selling my own products. I'm recommending products, but who's going to take my recommendation with a small baby 200 follower account versus somebody who has six, 700,000 followers on Instagram? You know, what's going to be that difference there? And it's the relatability. It's that person sitting on the other side of the screen that also maybe has a brick and mortar business or also maybe has a husband who they're sick of watching work 70 hours a week, or maybe they want to be home with their kids. That Those little pieces and factors of my life that I felt like were so insignificant significant and didn't need to be shared. That's what I've created my business off of. Mm. And it took me accepting those things as not faults in my life either. These things that have happened, these parts of my journey that are hard for me to share are the reason that I'm here and they make me relatable to people. So that kind of, I kind of got off on a tangent, but that was, a, that was Beautiful. one thing for me for sure. Um, the other thing was I have always struggled big time with procrastination on things that I need to do for me. I am great at keeping my house. I'm great at taking care of my kids. I'm great at running a business like our, my, me and my husband's business. But when it came to things that I needed to do for me, not me serving other people, I would always procrastinate those things. And I would always put them at the very end of the line because that's honestly what most moms do. You know, we put everybody else in front of us and we make sure everybody else is taken care of. And then we follow up on ourselves later. And so mm. part of that is personal growth and, you know, working on yourself, prioritizing yourself. But the other big side of it for me, at least, was my procrastination. Like my my fear in these tiny tasks that really weren't that big. And I still struggle with this even now. You know, I have these tasks in front of me that 
It's like, Brooke, why are you procrastinating that? It's not that you don't know how to do it. You know, yeah, it may be a little bit scary, but like, what really is it that is holding you back from doing this? And at the end of the day, I didn't have a good excuse. And that was hard for me to hit too. It's like, you are just standing in your own way. You are just the roadblock that is standing between you and finding the success because you won't move out of the way and just do it. And Mm -hmm. that is, like I said, something that I still work on every single day, something that I still face in my business. You know, as I've grown and as I've gotten bigger, there's new things that I have to push myself to do, things that I've never done before that I want to be doing. And so I have to still continually learn to like push myself and not procrastinate those things and know that like, It might feel scary right now, but when I look back in six months, it's not going to be scary anymore. Just like that first social media video was terrifying for me. And now nine months later, I make them like it's nothing. And I throw a video up in five minutes and I'm confidently doing it. Um, That that was a huge factor for me, for sure, was just the procrastination side of things. Wow. I'm telling you, the comments are blowing up with I can relate to that. Um, And let's just take a moment, maybe even a moment of silence to put that that you know, opposite of self-care characteristic to, to, to bed, take it out behind the barn and just put it out, help it pass away because Mm -hmm. it is such a, such a relatable and um, defeating characteristic of so many of our personalities that we uh, procrastinate on self-care. We procrastinate on things that are good for us, not our families, not our kids. You know, we tend to be good people in those areas and on top of those things. But when it comes to the things that we know we need to do for ourselves. And so it sounds like this was more than just a, and you mentioned this because you wanted to contribute to your family, but I mean, this, this sounds like more than just a casual side gig or kind of, how somebody would think about, well, let me just go pick up a couple of shifts at a restaurant and do a couple of waitressing gigs and bring in some extra money. I mean, you were really putting more importance on starting this. I mean, you were procrastinating and sometimes we procrastinate the most important things. This was about what for you, confidence building, following through with something um, obviously helping contribute to your family. I mean, what was your, it, it, there had to be some deeper whys that came up as you ran into some of these roadblocks yeah. that you began to say to yourself, I'm not going to let this defeat me. Yeah, it was um, honestly, it, it's hard to put a one thing on it because there was so many things that motivated me, granted, like my husband and my kids and all of the above. But I will say that once I decided I was going to do this, it was almost I'm trying to say this in the best way. I was about, you know, a month or two in and I was still facing all these things. I wasn't making a ton of money. I wasn't had, I didn't have a huge following on any platform. I was, I was struggling. I was battling all the ifs and wins and all the above. And it was like, Brooke, you have put in so much into this. You have dedicated yourself. You have overcame, you have gotten to this point. Are you really going to throw all of this away when you know full and well, what this is going to bring to your family? If you just stick with it, Are you really going to throw all that away because you're tired, because you're overwhelmed? Is is that honestly thinking about what we had been dealing with for the next 20 years was motivation enough for me to not quit? I knew that this was going to work and I had that mindset, but I didn't know when it was going to work. But I knew I had the capability, just like anybody else has the capability of making money online. And so I had to get into that mindset. And I also knew that I was this sounds silly, but I felt like I was being called to this. I felt like this was my mission field. Like I was supposed to be here. And so Mm. it was a lot of overcoming. It was a lot of self growth, but it's been so much more than just a means to an end and an extra income. It's been me growing personally, me finding my identity again, outside of just being a wife and a mom or outside of just being a brick and mortar business owner. Like I found Brooke again. And that is so like it's going to make me tear up because that is such a big thing for me. I have I have a crazy past. I'm not very old, but I had a lot of life happen to me in a short amount of time. And I used to have this fiery confidence and like just ready ready to do anything. I moved to Guatemala when I was 17 years old. Like I had mm. the fire to do anything. I was passionate. I started a business at 17. And then I had a lot of life happen to me and I won't get into too many details, but it 
took all of that away. That confidence was gone. And it was, it took me so long to find that again and to find that like purpose and that drive and like, you can actually do this. And so it was almost trying to get back to that was what continued motivating me. I was feeling it. I was feeling the growth. I was feeling the development. I knew that this is what I was supposed to be doing. It was so uncomfortable. And so like, I am coming out of everything that has been normal to me for the last four years. And I'm doing something completely outside of my comfort zone. And it felt yeah. weird. It did. It felt uncomfortable. It felt like I was walking away from a version of me, but that version of me, all the things that I was doing in that lifestyle or that life, those things don't serve this version of me. And so I had to choose to walk away from those things or those negative self doubts or those negative self talk and step into this fully 100% new version of me. If you're going to go into something like this, yes, you can treat it as just like a little side hustle, but if you're really wanting to make this long-term and sustainable and something that you can carry for a long time, you have to go 100% all in. And a lot of times that's a lot of personal growth too, because you're choosing to do the hard things every single day. And when you do that, you have to rid some of that part of you that no longer serves this version of you. I can't mm. spend the day laying on the couch watching Netflix for eight hours because I'm not feeling it and do that every single day for two weeks. It's not going to grow my business. And I had to kind of step out of some of those things that have become so normal in our day to day life and and step into this kind of new version of me. But it, it motivated me. I get on such bad tangents, Dave. I'm so sorry. You asked a question. I love about it. Me. I'm eight steps this way. <laughs> I'm I'm ready to throw some hats, damn it. I'm I'm looking for hats. I'm God bless America. Um I'm fired up. Um you I'm, ready to go, I'm I'm ready to go swim a couple of I'm ready to go swim a couple of laps in the pool out there. Um <laughs> uh the big the big the big oceanic pool. Um That's a big lap. that is a big pool. Um Man, I'm fired up. I'm inspired. I mean, you're you're talking real life personal development here, not just hoopla and hype. Uh, this is really about um, losing and finding and rebuilding identity. This mm -hmm. is about losing, finding, rebuilding confidence. I mean, you're really hitting some wildly important, inspiring points with your tangents, and it's a beautiful thing to listen to. Um, there's, there's a lot of follow-up questions I could ask about that. Maybe we'll come back to it, but I want to ask something a little bit different. So many people, you know, from the outside looking in, think that here at Legendary, you know, people are going through our training and then we're trying to get them to turn around and sell our training. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, so I want to talk about niche selection a little bit and kind of how you decided this beautiful comment. Melissa, let me try to see if I can find, she's just said, and maybe you could post it again, that uh, a heart, and thank you so much. She's always on. I think it's Melissa. She's always on. I see her comments. It's a, a beautiful soul that joins us here and makes wonderful contributions in the comments. And it's just a, a great part of the show. Um, she said a Harvard study was recently released and I, 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 I didn't verify or validate the study. Haven't seen it myself. Um, but that businesses' success nowadays re, uh, rely on some, hi Melissa, Moody fits, some form of relatability. Um, mm. And I thought that was kind of interesting. And, and uh, maybe that is why so many of us pick the niche that we pick, which so many new people come in and say, hey, you know, I want to go into the online business or make money online niche because I can relate to needing to bring in extra money that was my whole motivation of starting this and that's something that i can easily talk about so it's somewhat yes. self-explanatory but i do want to point out for everybody that you know nowhere in our training are we trying to get anybody to turn around and be affiliates for our program it's mm -hmm. not what we're training anybody to do and it's not uh, a part of our curriculum we have an affiliate program just in its affiliate marketing is only one of the business models that we teach here. Um, you know, obviously a lot of people have their reason for being an affiliate here with legendary. A lot of the feedback I've heard is just that they had a good experience and are, you know, happy and proud to send people here, but let's take a step back even a little bit further. I mean, how did you pick your niche and decide on a particular niche and topic to move forward with? 
um, to, to actually focus on and commit to when you were started with obviously knowing you're an intelligent person. There's lots of different niches I could go into. I could talk about lots of different things. Um, I, I could go into the off-roading niche. I mean, it would have been very easy for you to take your business, brick and mortar business, kind of take that online, begin to educate people about off-road vehicles, about mm-hmm. how to keep service them, buy them right, sell them, um, uh, fun things to do with them. I mean, gosh, I'm sure you guys could have come up with a lot of things to talk about there and, and figure out how to monetize. How yeah. did you in, pick and commit to the niche, which um, we're dropping everybody at least one of your Instagram links, and you may have other things going on out there and be working in different niches. I don't know, but it's clear that you're working in the the online marketing space. How did you pick and commit to that niche when you were first getting started? So it was honestly really confusing for me to try and pick a niche just because I didn't really understand it at the beginning. You know, what is a niche? What is, am I, am I pigeon held to this? Am I, what, what's going on? What do I have to do here? And so when I first finished the training and went to set everything up, I kind of was in like three different areas. So I applied to be an affiliate for legendary just because I found so much value in the course. Like I really, truly loved the course. And I was like, okay, I think I want to, I want to promote this course just because it provided so much value for me. I know a lot of people that would also love this opportunity to create multiple streams of income, not to be an affiliate necessarily, but just to take an educational course like this to learn these skills. A lot of people in my personal life that I knew would benefit from it. So I applied there and then I also applied to like three or four different online therapy companies. Um, basically like relationship niche is what that would be. So therapy for marriage. Um, I applied to one that was more dedicated towards moms with teenage girls. Cause I have a 13 year old stepdaughter. If you have a 13 year old girl, you know, the lovely, uh, say no more with that. Yeah. <laughs> so I love her. She's my, I mean, amazing, amazing human, but it's, it's parenting. And so I went into applied for a company with that one was a marriage and then one was more kind of Christ focused. So I had applied to those three companies. I'd actually started an Instagram page for that niche. Mm. Um, and then I started an Instagram page for the wealth niche, um, started an Instagram page for the therapy niche. And then I also wanted to do stuff with our side by side ATV business. And so once I started setting everything up and going into it all, I quickly realized that doing three niches at the same time as a complete beginner was going to be way too much, (laughs) way too much. I was way overwhelmed. I didn't even necessarily understand what I was doing in one necessarily, you know, then comparing it to try and do it with three was a lot. And so from there, I just kind of scaled back. I thought, what really can I focus on go head first carry for the next like maybe six months and then once I'm comfortable I can just start a second account and kind of do that second on the back end and have two going but not necessarily try and start them all with one Um, Mm -hmm. and so at the time when I had applied to be an affiliate for all those companies in the therapy niche I had only heard back from one and the other two required me to have a larger following to be an affiliate for them and I had already been approved from legendary so honestly that's why I started on the wealth side just because I you know, had gotten approved there, but I wanted very much so to also be in those other industries because I love the fact that this is spread across the boards. And people ask me that all the time. Do I have to promote a make money online opportunity? Do I have to stay in the wealth niche? Absolutely not. A lot of people do just because of like what you said, they find it relatable. That's maybe how they came into the space. They took a course to learn how to do it. So they feel like that's where they need to be. There's so many other profitable ways to make money online with affiliate marketing. And even with a core four in general, that if you just don't stay closed minded to it and really go and do your research. There's so many opportunities out there. So like personally in our side by side business, I am now in the process of trying to start working towards I'm setting up an email campaign for our side by side business. Um, They don't necessarily have a ton of like affiliate companies with the dealers that we have, but we're dealers for all of these companies, which is basically Mm -hmm. the same process where we're receiving a part of the commission when a product is sold because we get it for a lower cost. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same type thing where I can market all these companies that we're a dealer for through these automatic emails just like I was taught with the legendary course and use those same skills to apply it there and promote multiple companies products through automatic emails over the course of time without me having to lift a finger. And so I'm taking these skills now and applying them to my brick and mortar business. I obviously am now still very much in the wealth niche. And then I am slowly trying to kind of start and work towards doing that other online therapy. I really, really, really would love to go into that um, and do that. I've always wanted to. I have a huge missions heart. And that's another reason why I wanted to go into this because I wanted something that I could really help people. And I felt like if I was promoting tangible products, if I was doing like 
Nike shoes or, you know, Lululemon clothes. I was losing that personal aspect, kind of that, like telling my story and really being present with my audience and all those things, because it was more just like, look at this super cool phone case. You should go buy it versus yeah. like this, what this has really done for my life. This is how it's changed my life. And so that's why I wanted to stay within those two, the relationships and the wealth, because I felt like I could do those things very well within those two niches. Um, but like I said, I haven't gone super heavy on the other one just because I have been very, very high focused on my wealth niche, but I get more hats, <laughs> but I'll get there. I will get there one day and I will be doing it all. Day. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, over here you know going smiling so so big inside because what I think a lot of people miss is how these strategies and skills can be applied to a lot of things that you're already doing yeah some of you still have jobs a lot of you most of you probably still have a job a business elsewhere something else that you're doing and these are skill sets that we're teaching that apply to I mean, damn near everything, even Literally. a contractor. If I would have known these strategies and skill sets back when I was working with my father um, before I started in all of this, uh, and I was trying to start a construction business on my own because I wanted to cut the umbilical cord. I, had, I, had, uh, I was trying to go out on my own and start my own construction company. And... Um, uh, you know, I needed to get licensed. I needed to do all of these things here in the state of Florida that that, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of times we don't I certainly didn't realize I needed to do. I thought I could just buy a truck and go start a business. But um, there was a lot of cost, a lot of hoops I needed to jump through. But one of the biggest things I, I didn't understand how to do was get customers, for God's sakes. Yeah, that's a big thing. You know, I didn't know. I'm starting as a handyman. I'm 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 answering ads. I'm you know I'm sitting here as a as a new kind of handyman trying to just get out as like a carpenter and get some experience just with some other real estate investors or 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 you know who may have been pulling the permits as homeowners or other contractors to begin to get some experience outside of my debt. And I'm I'm sitting here replying to ads on Craigslist, you know, as if I'm look at, applying to a job. I mean, it was harder work to try to get a dadgum client and get some work than, than it was if I just had a job. It was like I was applying to 50 jobs a day. So I had yeah. no idea how to be the hunted rather than the hunter. You know, right. that's the only way that I knew how to get customers, clients, business. And, um, you know, these skill sets are applicable to yeah. any business. And also, wait for it. Wait for it, all of you who are listening, sitting here thinking that you can't wait to get out of your J-O-B and into some online. Mo you can dead gum apply these skill sets a lot of times to the existing job that you have and yep. bring additional value to the company and, and potentially get a pay increase as you develop these skills and prepare to launch your own business or maybe go full time in the future. This is not all about you know, starting this and then quitting your job the next day and being a millionaire the next day. And, 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 and th this is a, this is about developing skills. Yeah. It's about where can I use these skills? Most of the time they, they, they're applicable in areas that we we're not even thinking about. We're not even realizing. So I, I love that you brought that up. Certainly didn't expect you to go in that direction. Just a reminder for everybody who's, um, you know, tuning in here for the first time. All of our guests are, in your case, how many times have you been on the show? Uh, this is my second. Okay, so you're a returning guest. Most, But you still weren't prepped or scripted. No. You still, I don't know what you're going to say. You don't know what I'm going to ask. There's absolutely no prep or scripting behind the scenes. The questions are not lined up. Um, yeah. We're just having an honest, authentic conversation about what the hell we're doing here and, yeah. and what it was like and the things we overcame. But... Um, you know, so just in case you're tuning in here for the first time and you're wondering, is this some sort of co-hosted, scripted thing? It's not. Uh, these are, you know, the people that you see on this show are just clients who went through our education, who applied these skill sets to many different areas of their life. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes what you see is only the tip of the iceberg, as we're learning here with you. Um, if at any time you want to get started, you can click legendary or 
there's a link. You can go to legendarymarketer.com forward slash enroll and take the challenge. Get started. Get, enroll in the Blueprints, which is our more advanced program. Um, it, it does come with a cost. You don't have to take it if you don't want to. Uh, this is not a forced entry. Um, it, it's, it's, it's just, it, the, you know, we didn't invent affiliate marketing or selling courses either. We don't claim to, to be. We, we're just, we realize that entrepreneurship is hard. We realize that there's a lot of information out there online. We also realize the failure rate for this is extremely high. It just is. And so we're trying to provide solutions and support to help you to be successful. Um, And at the same time, we've built a business out of that, eating our own cooking, selling our own courses, coaching and events. And you've been to an event. You've spoke from from a stage. You've you've come a, a long way in this short well it's not super short but a over a year period of time did you ever imagine it was so fun to see your husband watch you speaking and up there being the woman you know not the man we're always trying to be the man but you're the woman up there and your man was out there watching you crush it what was that like for you it was crazy. So would obviously, obviously we have our side by side business. And so anytime we would go riding, when I say my riding is like, we have our own side by side. So we load up and we go to Arkansas and we'll rent a cabin for five days and we'll go ride our side by side in the mountains, like the trails and all that. So when we go do those things or we go to events, everybody knows my husband because he has a name for himself in the industry. He's been in the industry for so long. He has his own business. Now, a lot of people know me, too, because I've been up there for so long. But there was a long time that we would go and it's like, blank, blank, blank. And nobody knew me. And so now going to this, he was like, is this what you felt like? All those writing trips? Like, nobody knows me, but everybody knows you. And I'm like, yeah, that's exactly how I felt. Um, But it was really cool, too, to be on that side of things and to see him see me in that light it was so motivating he launched his his affiliate marketing business the day after we got back from mastermind because he was so motivated being there he's always wanted to do it too just because he's seen the success that i've had but going and seeing you and some of the other men that are in this industry and just seeing that it's not just a bunch of you know young woman with kids like that stereotype is uh, so misleading because there is so many people from all different ages and all different like countries and lifestyles and all of the above that are so successful in the space and so for yeah. him to see that in person and to see you know me in that space and thriving and i like i was so nervous to speak but i felt like i was at home when i was doing that like i mm. loved what i was doing i loved being there i loved this business and it was very, very motivating for him and very inspirational. And also, like, it, it did something special to our marriage, too, just for him to see me grow this business. I mean, I, I granted found it back in December, but I didn't launch till the end of April. So it's been, I guess, like almost nine months ish around that time frame, um, which has gone by so fast, but still slow at the same time. But just for him to see that growth. And there was many days where at the very beginning he was like, babe, just you know, don't, don't get your hopes up. Like I'm, I'm here for you. I'm supportive of you, but he was just skeptical as I was. And it was, he didn't want me putting all my eggs in one basket and banking on this to be our saving grace. And then it not working. And, um, cause we'd never made money online before. It was very, very, very uncomfortable for us at the beginning. And so once those small amounts started coming in and I would make like $20 in a day and I'd be so excited, like, like I made $20 in a day. And then two months later, it was like $200 in a day was a huge deal, you know? And then it just kept increasing over time. And that, that whole journey and just experiencing all of that growth with him, like it's, it's been, there's not even really a word to describe it. It's been so just like almost healing too for our relationship and just like the growth that we've experienced together, the personal growth that we've experienced together. We're both like working out together now and that never has happened before, but just little things like that, that just when you start on this path to like, kind of like we were talking about before, personal growth and self-growth, it just kind of starts almost having like a domino effect for the rest of your life. And if you can like stay in that and continue pushing towards it, it's really beautiful. Everything that happens, it really is. Mm. Oof, God, look, where, where is the captain's hat? Holy smokes. Where is the F average be legendary hat? Hello. (laughs) Hello. Hello. (laughs) My Lord. Um, (laughs) My friends, I'm fired up. I, you know, it's a beautiful thing, Brooke, and uh, you're, you're right. Um, 
you know, sometimes we come in with expectations that are just the tip of the iceberg in terms of what's possible. Mm -hmm. So often we come into something like this and we can be very money focused. And one of the things that we try to do when we, when we have conversations with people, um, our team of advisors and so forth, we try to refocus people on developing the skills Instead of just only being focused on the money that you can make with a business, because the skills are what people can never take from you. And if you focus on learning the skills, then that's something that you'll have for a lifetime. And that's really what we want you to have here. We don't want you to be dependent on on legendary. We want you to be independent. We want you to have skills that uh, where you don't have to put your eggs in one basket where you don't have to be relying on one product, one company, one niche even. You can right. apply these, 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 um, these skill sets. I also, though, think that we truly underestimate and oftentimes don't even see coming the confidence and the therapeutic value of doing something like this. And yeah. for me, that was the same thing. You know, my past being riddled with addiction and homelessness and uh, being a high school dropout and all of those things, you know, I had a lot of shame and I had a lot of, um, I had a lot of confidence. I had a lot of skepticism in myself. And I think so often we misplace our skepticism and we say, well, I'm skeptic, skeptical of that, or I'm skeptical of that person. When what I was skeptical of myself, If I could actually do it, you know, if I was to boil down and peel back the layers of the onion, it wasn't that I was skeptical of the world. It was skeptical that I was skeptical of myself. Could I follow through? Could I stick with it? Did I have the mindset that that, you know, would would allow me to keep going when times got tough? Could I overcome what people said about me? Could I, you know, what was I going to, and and those are the things that I'm hearing, not to mention some of the beautiful benefits you've got in relationship, marriage, spirituality, things of that nature that are so personal to you and important and that you just gave us a a beautiful little glimpse into what happens in your marriage and in your home that's been impacted by this. Thank you for sharing that. But I just wonder how many of you are, you know, shortchanging yourself in terms of expectations about what is possible here and how you could potentially grow into the next best version of yourself if you actually stuck with something. And my friends, whether it's this or something else, I mean, look, I, I, I never want to feel, I never want people to feel like in this day and age, you know, we're here to manipulate or sell you something that you don't need. You know, if if you're if you've been watching this and you've gone through, say, our introductory appetizer challenge course and you say, look, I don't think this is for me, but you're somehow for some reason sitting here on the show. These these principles apply no matter what you're doing. You know, these are pretty timeless, pretty practical, very real principles that we're all especially coming out of, as you touched on before, a difficult time for most families, people in, in our country, our world out of the pandemic, where a lot of us experienced a lot of hardships, mental, um, you know, depression, uh, doubts. Maybe we lost someone or something that was important to us. And now we're needing to rebuild our lives, our identities and find ourselves again. Um, man, you're, you're touching on a lot of things throughout this entire episode that are just so important. And you wouldn't know unless you talk to somebody who's actually done it like yeah. yourself. And that's why these shows are so important. So let's end with this, Brooke. You've touched on a lot of things and, and we've gotten incredible insight into you know how you've developed in a fairly short, but as you mentioned, felt like a long period of time, nine, nine months or so. If you could pinpoint something that comes up for you, just something else, what have you learned about yourself through this journey? Oh, man. <laughs> we could talk on hours on this subject. Um, the biggest thing, I would say that I 
I'm capable of changing the world. I mean, let's just put it blatantly. Like I am capable of doing so much more than I give myself credit for. And if I would just get out of my own head, like I am created with the same body, the same brain as anybody out there. If I am, if they're capable of doing it, I am too. And like you said, like my skepticism wasn't on the industry. It wasn't on the company. It wasn't on niches or sales funnels or anything like that. It was, am I capable of doing this? Can I truly start this business as a small town mom who has never done social media in her life and really make a difference for myself and my family? And that right there, like getting to that point of accepting, like, no, like I am fully 100% capable of doing this and doing it in any way. And just kind of circling back to what you talked about, like I now have these high income skills. I don't worry about my financial future anymore. Even if I lost my entire business today, all my Instagram got shut down, all of my affiliate accounts went away. I have all of that in my brain. Nobody can take that from me. I can go and apply all of this to the same niche, to another niche, to a whole different category of products, go make digital products, go apply it all to my brick and mortar business and help that take off. I mean, there's so many different ways that I could do this now, but I'm capable of it. And that is the big thing. Like I am more than capable of doing this and applying myself and learning the necessary skills. And if you have that mindset, there's literally nothing that can stop you. Like there's nobody standing in your way saying you can't do affiliate marketing. There's nobody standing in your way saying that you can't grow social media. It's just, we are all so hard on ourselves and the limiting beliefs and the self doubt like beats us up. And mm. it's, it's so hard to get out of that mindset. But once you do like almost, almost like talk to yourself, like, is this really how we feel about ourselves? Like, is this really what we want to do for the next 50, 60 years? We want to look back and think like, what would have been, what could have been if I would have let myself get to that point where I didn't care, where I did not care about what anybody else thought. I didn't care. And, and that's another thing. I'm a huge people pleaser. Like, to a fault, a huge people pleaser. That's a lot of my um, hard times in my life before I got a hold of myself was because I was way too worried about everybody else and not me. Mm. And um, doing this has given me such like a personal confidence in the fact that like my identity is not in the mood that my husband's in. My identity is not in how much money I'm making today. My identity is not in the way my kids are acting or how stressed they're making me or the way work went today. Like all of those things change and happen every single day and they're never going to go away. Life is always going to happen. But who I am and what I am capable of isn't determined by any of that chaos. That chaos just happens. It's just life. Let it happen. Let it come. Let it go. Let it do its thing. Stay true to who you are and what you know you're capable of and don't let the cloud of chaos change that. And you will go so far, so, so, so far in this space. And I, I have to remind myself of that. I'm saying all this as like, these are things that I have to work on, remind myself, do daily to make sure I stay in this space of like being able to grow and learn and stay moving. Am I going to get more hats? <laughs> oh, we're stacking them all. <laughs> <gasps> Throw them into the ocean. No, I'm just kidding. That. that was the DDT. <laughs> wow. I was reading some of the comments as you were just saying that. And it's, I mean, they just, they're going crazy. They're going crazy in, in, in the comments. They're throwing love. They're throwing uh, respect. They're throwing, um, I mean, you know, do you counsel yet? You know, we thought we were done. She keeps dropping more nuggets, slay girl. I mean, I've seen it all. Uh, you are on fire, mama. You are, uh, you know, you are on fire. And it's a beautiful thing to see. Uh, I'm, I'm honored and pleasure. You know, it's a pleasure to know you, to have met you, to, to have you in my circle um, and to just be able to absorb some of your energy and your inspiration. And even the, again, every time you open your mouth, it's just uh, oozing platinum nuggets, wonderful life experience, um, not hoop hype and, 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 and crap. And, and it's, it's real stuff. I mean, just that, that nugget about people pleasing there at the end was in the, in the, in the races for one of the most powerful things you've said throughout this hour. Um, it, it's just, you know, about your identity, about the things that do and don't make up who you are. The difference yeah. between life just happening 
and separating and detaching those things from who you are as a person, um, allowing yourself to, you know, build your confidence based on your vision, um, uh, uh, you know, not how your husband feels or how your kids are acting that day. That's not you. And so many of us are so intertwined and enmeshed with all of these, you know, these, these habits that we've picked up along the way. And also that we were taught by, um, you know, other people. And it's a beautiful thing to step into your own power and really yeah. come to your own beliefs and to realize what you are capable of. And I, I, you know, I have a sense, I have a hunch. We'll, we'll continue to follow up with you and track your success and your journey and, and have you back and on as often as we can to deliver value uh, to, to, to all of us because it's, it's great to learn from you. But I just have a hunch that this is just the tip of the iceberg for you. And uh, your, your way of coming back and articulating what you've learned is, is, is beautiful. And, and don't forget that. That's, that's a real gift that you have. And who knew you had it? I know. You, had it? I know. you were sitting there and nobody knew who you were at the, at the, at the, at the uh, off-road meets and so forth. You were just Blake's wife, right? Yep. Um, and here you are. Here you are. Brooke. Okay, the blessed affiliate mama underscore on Instagram and TikTok and so much more. Right. That's just one leg of your stool. Um, yeah. It's it's so obvious. And so keep us posted, girl. OK, come back and see me. Thank you for the wildly legendary hour today and um, keep up the phenomenal work. OK, I will. Thank you guys so much. It was wonderful being here. All right. See you. All right, my friends. I mean, if that doesn't fire you up and get you ready to rock and roll, check your pulse. Check it. Let's just make sure you're still breathing. My friends, um, seriously, what a blessing. And thank you all for the amazing, supportive comments. You all make this show. Now, now Brooke made this show today. Holy smokes. Holy guacamole. Uh, I, I need to step away and process all of that because she just – she just backed a dump truck into all of our driveways and just dropped a ton of platinum nuggets on all of our heads. And we need to process that. Okay. Th this interview is one that we all need to step away and process here. Um, her Instagram and TikTok handles right on the screen, but it's blessed affiliate mama underscore at the end, all one word and an underscore at the end, blessed affiliate mama underscore. Um, and, uh, uh, that's where you can find her and at least initially can initially uh, connect and learn from her. Um, but holy macaroni. Okay. There's nothing more to be said. I'm going to end the show. This has been an hour of power for me, um, hopefully for you as well. And hopefully it's given you a, a perspective um, uh, that, that this is not all, you know, holding hands and running through a field of flowers. This is not all, uh, you know, it's not easy it's not even simple, uh, but it's powerful, right? As you push through the challenges and overcome the things that will be standing in your way on this journey of building your own business online um, and, and some of the outcomes and some of the benefits that you get on top of money. Did you all notice that we didn't even talk about money? I mean, Brooke, uh, I know from personal experience, has had some, some great financial wins, but today was not even about that. It, I mean, um, it was about her, uh, the, the benefits that she's gotten, her family has gotten from this journey and sticking with it and, and following through. And my hope is, is that it's opened all of your eyes to, um, to, to what's possible and, and that it's, it, it, this, this can be and will be if you follow through most likely more than money for, uh, for all of you. It has certainly been for me. It's been a way for me to uh, grow my skills, see what I'm made of, right? Enhance my, you know, Warren Buffett says that if you in, increase and enhance and improve your communication skills, you can, uh, you can increase your income 50% over your lifetime. I think he's being conservative by, with that 50% number. Um, we're learning how to increase and enhance our communication skills. Um, you know, it, 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 that's just, again, one leg of the school of the stool and who would have thought, uh, at those, you know, off, off road meets and so forth, Blake's wife, right. Who nobody knew 
was as powerful and inspirational and talented uh, as, as she is. She didn't even know, <laughs> right? She didn't even know. You heard her say it yourself. Um, and so what a beautiful thing, not just for everybody else to see you step into your power, but for you to recognize it yourself. You know what I mean? That's, that's where the real benefit comes from because then once you feel the confidence in yourself, then the sky's the limit, right? It's when you actually feel and notice yourself growing. Sure. It's nice for other people to say, wow, you've grown a lot, but did that ever really make you feel any type of way when grandma or, or some of your parents friends said boy he's just shot right up right when you went from this to this tall no it's like okay yeah i know whatever i've grown but when you feel yourself growing it's quite a powerful experience when you recognize that in yourself and you begin to build confidence based on that that's what we heard this morning so with that being said get on out of here my friends if you're looking to get started or start over with any of our training you can go to legendarymarketer.com forward slash enroll, E-N-R-O-L-L, and you can um, start with a challenge. You can enroll in the blueprints. You can buy a mastermind ticket if any are available. Uh, I know that our February event, I believe, is, is booked, meaning sold and registered and booked. Uh, if you want to come to that event, uh, which Brooke mentioned a couple of times, our mastermind events, you, you can uh, email our customer support uh, and see if any spots are available. Uh, you can do that at support at legendarymarketer.com. And with that being said, nothing else to say. Get out of here. We'll see you back here tomorrow for another episode. Have a legendary day. Get out of here. Peace.